I got one if you want to. Actually, no, just a little bit. See how furiously I write it. Six people. Six people. So, Mom, I think it's the guy. So, the two of you can derail the whole train. Then all our computers. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Wednesday, July 5th uh, Planning and Zoning Commission for the Town of Weathersfield. Uh, could the clerk help me? Yeah, uh, Chairman Harley. Vice Chairman Margiata. Nope. Clerk Roberts is here. Mr. Hughes. No. Mr. Eichel. Here. Mr. Hammer. No. Mr. Hamicki. No. Mr. Dean. Here. Mr. Allard. No. Mr. Edwards. Here. Ms. Antoniak. Yes. Mr. Silver, no. So <clears throat> we currently have six people here. Uh, we do hope that there is a seventh before this is uh, too far along. Uh, a reminder to the applicants that you need five positive votes in order to pass anything, majority, but five positives. So that makes it a little more necessary for us to have people here or desirable to have people here. With that, let's go on to public hearing 3.1. This is application. This is application 1941-17-Z, Denise Patel, seeking a special permit in accordance section 5.2 to construct a three-story, 30,000 square foot uh, self-storage facility and a 1,650 square feet of outdoor storage and then a 4,500 square foot gas station and convenience store. This is all at 1881 Berlin Turnpike and this is a continuation from last meeting. So welcome back. Thank you. Good to be back. Um, I know there are a, there's at least one person who wasn't here last time, and just for anybody that's new in the audience, if you could start with a summary discussion. Certainly. Um, for the record, my name is Nathan Kirshner. I'm a project manager with Langen Engineering out of New Haven, Connecticut. Uh, with me this evening, uh, on behalf of the applicant, is Harish Patel. Um, if any questions come up with respect to the application, I'm sure he'd be happy to help out as best he can. Um, as a quick, I guess, reintroduction to the project, as requested. Um, the uh, project site, as the, uh, the chairman had indicated, is 1881 Berlin Turnpike in Weathersfield. Um, the map in front of everybody for quick orientation, north is up, Berlin Turnpike is on the right-hand side of the page. Uh, Arrow Road is directly north of the site. Uh, there's a vacant parcel to the south and behind the property is Russell Road. Uh, the applicant is proposing a 30,000 square foot footprint, three-story self-storage facility on the westernmost portion of the property, um, which is the larger white box. Uh, closer to the Berlin Turnpike is a gas station and approximately 3,000 square foot convenience store. Um, there are several waivers being requested uh, along with the application. Uh, one is with respect to um, the parking for the self-storage unit. Uh, which we had discussed uh, in a little bit of detail, uh, actually I guess in pretty substantial detail at the last hearing. Um, I can walk through that as well as needed, but I'll, I'll, I'll wait for questions on that matter. Um, the other waiver request is for actually the one parking stall, the northernmost parking stall in the convenience store is slightly into the side yard setback. Uh, Mr. Gillespie had indicated that um, there is no parking in that area, uh, even though it's not a front yard, our interpretation was um, you can park in the front yard. Uh, we misinterpreted that and are therefore requesting a waiver um, for the, I think it's about, it's less than half of that stall is in that side yard setback. Um, other than that, it is a special use permit for the self-storage facility. And um, we've received all staff comments at this time. Uh, we had multiple rounds of comments from town engineer, the wetlands agent, as well as Mr. Gillespie. and. Um, the zoning enforcement officer whose name escapes me, I apologize. Um, to my understanding, all those comments have satisfactorily been addressed. Uh, at the last meeting, it was requested that we address all outstanding comments. There were some clerical in nature with respect to us referencing the wrong section of the bylaws and things of that nature. And then there were a couple outstanding comments with respect to we were showing a, a subdivision line which has been removed from the plans for the time being. Uh, I expect to be back in front of the board at a subsequent hearing uh, for the subdivision application. Um, 
And then some of the technical comments that came out that were still outstanding with the town engineer. Um, we have last week submitted revised plans, which hopefully all members of the board have copies of, uh, as well as there was a requested perspective uh, that I will walk through in a moment, um, as well as a comment response letter addressing any of the outstanding comments we received from any of the town staff. Um, with respect to, I guess, really the, the what was considered, in my opinion, the, the big outstanding discussion point was really how did this thing, how does this project kind of mass? If you're standing on the Berlin Turnpike, there were concerns. We got a three storage self storage facility, we got a 25 foot retaining wall, we have a convenience store up front close to the road, and I, I understand and I'm sensitive to the board's concerns with respect to that. Um, at your request, the applicant had us put together these perspectives and there are uh, three photos, the top being the existing views from what can be seen on site. Uh, and does anybody not have a copy of, I believe there were 11 by 17, does everybody have a copy of this? Um, so I guess I'll start in the top left hand corner. It's looking south west from the signalized intersection to the, to the site. Um, below that is a rendered uh, visual of what the site would look like when it's developed. Uh, one of the things I had not, I guess, very artistically articulated uh, at the last hearing was really the, the massing of the buildings. Um, the way with the canopy at the front of the site as well as the proposed uh, hip roof style of the convenience store really masks the bulk of the, the retaining wall and with the self storage unit kind of tucked back to the rear of the site and buried into the hillside, it does break it up. So I know when you hear three story self storage facility, 30,000 square foot footprint, um, you know, hopefully that second column all the way to the left shows really what you'll see from the rail and turnpike. And I, it doesn't, in my opinion, show any, any substantial massing beyond what's, you know, what I can pretty, you know, pretty prototypical on the rail and turnpike. Uh, similarly, um, the second photo B shows kind of direct on shot if you were standing in the median, praying for your life, taking a photo with a smartphone. Um, what you'd be looking at on the site right now, uh, the second photo is what you'd be seeing when it's developed. Um, in addition to kind of the massing of the buildings, we have provided some pretty substantial landscape screening and things of that nature to help break up that massing. Um, and then lastly, there were concerns from abutters regarding the view from uh, Arrow Road and Russell Road. This is looking down Arrow from Russell um, what you'll see is the existing vegetation, and this is, I apologize, all the way to the right. The, the top right hand corner would be the existing view, um, and you can barely see, uh, and obviously there, there may be a couple trees here and there that do get cut down as a result of the construction work. But overall, you can see the curb cut just barely down Arrow Road, um, as well as you can just see a portion of the uh, gas station canopy peeking out on you. Um, so from the western portion of the site uh, really doesn't have too much of an aesthetic impact on what the, everybody sees today. So the driveway, the driveway into the 30,000 square foot facility is some 300 feet down Correct. the road, right? Yes. From Russell. George? Yeah, a couple of questions. Uh, my not being here last time. Uh, that up a lot that you show very trade on one of those. Oh, um, excuse me, uh, Sorry. Uh, not going to be used, right? This portion here? Yeah. Correct. But it belongs to you. Correct. As part of the subdivision, that will be the, the thinking ahead to the next step on the application. Um, we're only proposing a two lot subdivision. That piece of property would stay with the storage facility. It would not be developed. It'll stay what? With the, in a subdivided condition, it will stay with the self-storage facility. Um, it will not be developed at any time. It, to be honest with you, the topography back there is a little rough. I don't think it, it's cost effective to even consider putting anything back there. Um, and, and part of the, the layout is maintaining some sensitivity to the residential nature of Arrow Road. Um, I'll ask a second question, Mr. Chairman. Um, the uh, our architectural committee that advises us commented on the side of the building 
need to break it up. I think the town planner and our town planner also indicated that uh, there need to be something. And your response was trees? Correct. What do you mean by trees? I mean, I, I don't want any, you don't want a little shrub. That doesn't <laughs> break up anything. Certainly. Um, the dark green, actually all the trees along this side of the building facade are mature height shade trees. Um, I, mature what? They're, they're large scale shade trees. Uh, I don't actually, I have the plan over there. I can pull it up and tell you exactly okay, what well, species. How tall are they? The intent would be, we don't have power lines on that side of the street, so they'd grow anywhere from 16 feet right, and above. Um, so there, as far as breaking up the building facade, you know, you, you could do full windows, you could do things of that nature. Um, I'll be very candid, we do have to go back to the design review advisory committee um, at some point for, once we establish a tenant for the gas station, um, this, we don't necessarily need to provi provide any, we don't need to go back to them as I understand it for the self storage facility. Um, our experience, though, is the vegetation, the trees, and things of that nature will really do a better job of breaking up that facade than doing faux windows or something of that nature. Um, in my experience, the faux windows tend to really just look like fake glass. They don't, they don't really have a real aesthetic appeal to them. Um, if it's something the, the, the board here would, has a strong opinion of, we'd be happy to provide either a, a breakup of the material um, or the faux glass, if that's something that's... Normally, large buildings now are broken up. I never was in favor of much in the past, like 10 years ago, and they'd come here, or, you know, even 15. But now the tendency is to do that architecturally. And uh, not being an architect, that, that makes sense to me more and more. Um, now, I don't know if the trees will do it or not. I guess so. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know what the town plan, how he feels right now. I'd, I'd like his response. Uh, George, uh, certainly um, in a few years, the trees that are being proposed will mature um, and start to, you know, give some uh, size to themselves on that particular side. My concern is the corner, uh, I guess it's closest to the Berlin Turnpike. Um, height of the building is, you know, 50. I think 51 feet, something like that, if you look at the, the grading plan. So uh, it's obviously going to take time for those trees to get to those uh, mature heights. So um, that's kind of why I, you know, it, it's probably a combination. Uh, the the self-storage facility, not that it's a, you know, an architectural gem up on the north end of the Silestine Highway, has treatments that attempt to break up uh, yeah. the facade of the building in a, in a way that, um, I guess a matter of opinion, but certainly I, is. I'll jump in. I think that's a beautiful building there. I, I wasn't sure when it was approved, but it's come so far that I don't even realize it's there. And, uh, and yet it's well done on the outside. They maintain it well, the, the lawn and all the trees. And just, just so you know, as, as we're talking exactly about this subject, I believe that um, property sold and the new owners came in and took out all the landscaping. So the landscaping uh, could likely, you know, succumb to disease and or the whims of an owner. We made them go back out just recently and replant again. So, it wasn't meeting, but now we start them. all over from, you know, six foot high trees to try and, you know, uh, rise to the level of the building. So uh, I think it probably should be a condition and it should be looked at again by the design review um, advisory committee since they have to go back anyway see if we can come up with some sort of a more attractive treatment on that face of the building. <clears throat> we, have, we have no objection to that condition. Um, what was the, the site that was referenced? I'm sorry, just so I can look it up. It's the, I'm trying to think of the, the northeast corner of Silas Dean. And Jordan Lane. Lane. Thank you. It's extra see, space. Extra space, that's it. Extra space was the name, yep. You realize that. Say again? I said it's theoretically your competitor. Oh, understood. Because it's a similar structure. It's a large, multi-story structure, well-designed, so forth. But, I mean, I, I think we were pretty clear when we approved that one that we wanted them to make it look like an office building, not a warehouse, given its visibility and importance. And, you know, for better or for worse, they made a self-storage building that looks like an office building. It doesn't look bad. 
And if I may jump in, um, that, that uh, particular building that you're referencing on, on Jordan Lane, the Silas Dean, the new owner has uh, repainted the building and, and done things, I think as, as mentioned by the town planner. And uh, that building now looks, uh, I think, uh, uh, far less attractive than it did a few months ago as a consequence of this, this work. So I'd, I'd recommend if, that if you're utilizing uh, that particular building as a reference point for any modifications in your own architectural design, landscaping work, et cetera, uh, that you look at uh, photographs of that uh, structure at uh, the corner of Silas Dean and, and Jordan Lane as it was uh, perhaps a year ago, uh, a year ago backward, rather than as it now looks. I mean, you're proud to live in that neighborhood, right? Well, it, it certainly did not detract from from that right. neighborhood, and it prevented, I think, some, some additional deterioration. The building that it replaced had been essentially you know, was crumbling and and provided really, you know, no value to the town economically or aesthetically until that you know that uh, that particular storage building was designed and implemented. Uh, and my concern uh, in terms of uh, sort of representing uh, the neighborhood uh, in which that building has been placed, um, it's, you know, I'm, I'm quite fearful of the effect of the architectural effect, the aesthetic effect, and how it may, you know, uh, contribute to downgrading the neighborhood again after it's been struggling to uh, you know, do some revitalization you know, over, over the past several years. So, what do you think you ought to do, Tom? In the terms of all right with you? in terms of the Jordan Lane building or the one that's the before one us? we're talking about. I I would tend to think that that number one, the landscaping is uh, that he proposes is uh, is is appropriate. I would think that maybe he uh, also ought to look at uh, perhaps. Uh, different colorations of the, uh, you know, of the masonry, uh, and so that you've got an interplay of, of uh, you know, uh, of light and color, as opposed to, uh, say, a solid, you know, sheet of blank gray that you see as you approach the building, or some such, uh, you know, color as that. Uh, I think a degree of playfulness. On the facade of the building, uh, you know, would be would be appropriate and uh, render it uh, much more more attractive uh, as any kind of, of of purpose for which it's being uh, developed and designed, and I think that could be done without uh, you know any significant addition of of, uh, of costs or complications to. The structure. The the thing would be to make you know that the the actual builder would need to be uh, capable of uh, you know altering uh, you know, and and uh, altering and and changing colors of masonry or or whatever you're using to uh, uh, provide the uh, curtain wall for the building at that location. I had a quick question. In your number seven, you have no anchor client for the um, convenience gas station. Or do you have an anchor client for the storage facility? There is, yes. Okay, because I'm just saying it seems like we're we're just approving footprints. No, there. Um, and and uh, Dinesh, who's not with us, this, he was unable to be with us this evening. Um, does have I think two or three tenants. Uh, it's not a question of if he'll have a tenant for the convenience store and gas station. It's just a question of which which one to, uh, to be very candid. I just I just drove around looking at Seven Elevens, you know, Citgo's sure. and everything. I to see, and they had their own, I guess their own um, part or their big idea for how things have to look. And I, I noticed looking at this when I first saw, it, I said, I have the White Castle behind my behind my brick wall with something in front of it. And I was just trying to make sure that, as, he, as Dean says, is, or Tom says, is that the, the aesthetics in that back building in many ways become more important 
sure. as a backdrop for the building front. But if you throw a fluorescent, you know, orange roof in there, your background has to deal with it. That's what I'm right. No, understood. So since uh, you just referenced the memo, uh, he was referring to the memo that you provided us, uh, responses to comments. As I was going through there, there were a few things that I just kind of wanted to clarify. Number five, just so that the commission all uh, sees it and the public understands it. Number five is about the parking spaces. You've requested a waiver, and this is the and this is the only parking waiver. 37 is required, 32 is provided, so it's a waiver of five spots. This, the second topic is about parking at the gas station that that comes into the side yard calculation. Front, right? front yard is front. by half a space, yeah. Okay, but the numbers required for that facility are satisfied. Are satisfied. Yep. So those are the only two parking There's a, there's a third, uh, well, the two parking waivers. There's a third waiver, one of the landscaping uh, provisions, uh, G3 which is um, you have a minimum parking island uh, width of eight feet. I yep. think in the, on the gas station site, uh, specifically there's one that doesn't meet the uh, size limit. So they're asking for that one uh, waiver of the landscaping provisions. They provided uh, revised calculations to show that they satisfy the others. Thank you, that's what I was gonna go next. So yep. Landscaping waiver is only, only one. Right. Okay. Um, beyond that, <clears throat> There's a reference to the eventual canopy, and given that you don't have a tenant yet for the gas station, your preference is to leave the canopy for a future date Correct. and potentially have either staff approval, staff and or the architectural review. Uh, it has to go back to design review, so okay. that would be the, um, and then if, depending on whether you feel you need to see, that, see, that again, see it again or if you wanna defer that to um, design review. Okay. And I think the last thing that caught my eye, <clears throat> and by the way, is there any any uh, permits, any wetland? There is wetland? a, there was an erosion and sediment control certification that was issued by the Wetlands Commission so, back in eight, maybe April or so, March. So that was, that's it, that sh should have been in your packet much earlier. So let me ask you and then you confirm whether this has any bearing. I, th I find it strange that um, your specs are going to say this is about the um, dewatering plans. John, I, I kind of find it odd that you're just going to leave it up to contractor design completely. That you're not providing any parameters for such to the wetland agency, to you know some constraints that they need to work within. Well, one of the things with respect to the the contractors' dewatering design that to be very candid, we're taking advantage of is uh, it was a requirement of the town that we're out there for inspections. Um, as part of the construction documents that we will require the contractor to submit dewatering plans in advance of doing any of that work, and then we'll be out there for monitoring of them. Um, my experience with dewater, one, in this particular case, the dewatering really should be less than 24 hours worth of work. Um, so it's not a, a day in and day out, seven days a week type, type challenge. Um, and two, because we're, we have the advantage of being, on, on my end, we have the advantage of being required to be out there. Um, we have more positive control over how they do that to ensure it's done in accordance with state regulations, town regulations, and things of that nature. Okay, and so specific to this one item, uh, town engineer okay with being part of the approval process of the contractor's means and methods? So as it relates to the town engineer, <clears throat> as well as the fire marshal's comments, the, the plans, the revised plans came in uh, Friday morning um, and we were, town hall was closed at one o'clock on Friday and didn't open until eight o'clock this morning. So neither of those uh, staff members have had a chance to uh, look at the revised plans and determine whether they're completely satisfied. So I would suggest that as it relates to the town engineer's memorandum of June 15th and the fire marshal's comments from June 29th that um, these revised plans be subject to their review and approval. Um, the only, and I, and I think the uh, applicant's engineer has indicated that he's, uh, as you can see from the comments, either address them as far as he's concerned or is willing to address them to their satisfaction. The only comments uh, that I think <clears throat> 
may be outstanding if they're not satisfied is the comment from both the, the town engineer and the fire marshal about the potential for trucks, oversized trucks backing out onto Arrow uh, Road. Both staff members had concerns about that. The applicant has provided some templates and some turning radiuses that indicate uh, that, that they can drive in, do a turn, and then drive out again. Um, I can't speak to whether you know, they agree with that and have looked at the templates uh, because if they're not satisfied, I don't know what the design solution uh, would be. Uh, both of them suggested that maybe they have a driveway on the south that runs up the back side of the building up to the higher parking lot or vice versa, and there really isn't um, the ability to do that because uh, I think the building basically meets the minimum requirements whether they and there's a drainage i believe there's a drainage swale on that side so it may it would be a pretty significant change and i don't know that you would just simply want them to administratively sign off without you you know it would require drainage it would require it would it would have a chain reaction in terms of uh, design uh, parameters so I, I just can't speak to whether um, the response from the applicant's engineer satisfies both of them in reg and obviously both of them made the same comment so that's the only um, big issue that I don't feel completely comfortable with just giving them you know the ability unless you want it you know so if they're not satisfied right. and it has you know, it has to be changed then I think it's got to kind of have to come back um, for further review and uh, maybe significant changes to the plan so, uh, if, if so may so because I'm an engineer and I know there's at least one other person on this panel who knows exactly what he's getting at sure. um, what are you trying what did you give the town engineer what kind of a vehicle turns around WP 50 we, we did an SU 30 the box. Uh, as we had discussed at the last hearing and it seemed to have satisfactorily addressed mm -hmm. the, the board's concerns um, based on the size of the storage the, the individual units um, and the market that were the applicants ten, uh, targeting um, we, we just don't see it as the the, the uh, 18 wheeler. I'm sorry, uh, yeah. WB50, WB62, or 67. We just don't see those as being, at, you know, at, at the site at all. Right. Um, just trying to clarify that you didn't give him some, you know, WB50 that yeah can make it. It mean, needs to make you no, know, 20 no, no. movements, um, but he can do it. That kind no, of stuff. No, no, we didn't you, have you a, a box powers there. movement go through there. The um, and then with respect to the fire, um, I believe it was the. Deputy Chief, I, don't, I apologize, I don't remember what, what his title was. Um, his comment regarding uh, the fire truck movement and having to back out onto the street. Yeah, um, yeah. He didn't provide any turning templates, I'll, I'll, full disclosure. Um, <coughs> we did run through auto turn a, a ladder truck template. Um, and it, because of the layout of the truck and the wheelbase and where the wheels are situated, the back of the truck does overhang what, that loading space. And the grade, we double checked the clearance for the grading um, along here. And the ladder truck can make that movement, turn around, and, and exit from there. Um, can or cannot? It will. It can do that. Um, okay. I'm, I'm struggling with how, how we can get to yes and, and leave that issue open, but I suppose we can have that dialogue as we get closer to it. I suppose if, <clears throat> you know, they don't review and approve based on the memos, mm -hmm. you know, they got to they'd have to come back to work that out with with uh with you so okay. i mean that might be the catch um and i'll just simply have to explain to both of them that you know it's not that you have um you know usurped their authority it's a matter of them taking a harder look at it and making sure they're satisfied and if they don't feel comfortable with it come back here for further iterations of the design you know one of the things i was i was thinking about when i was taking a look at that turning movement um, was that a lot of the, uh, you mentioned this last time we, we met, is that a lot of those rooms are either 10 feet by 10 or less, so 100 square feet or less. And there's a few, you know, I think you have three levels, so there's yep. a few that are a little bit larger than that. But I mean, I would think that even if that was the case, that you had a larger vehicle than the SU-30, I think you said, so that's like one of the, I'll call it um, like the U-Haul, a little bit larger U-Haul. Correct. Right? So even if you had to do double trips, or, or, or a client came in and wanted, they would just have to either do a couple of trips or, or may find another facility or whatever. It's right. more for the owner's risk. As long I feel better that, that, the, that you did do the, the turning movement for the fire truck, because that is 
you know. Certainly, no, the, the life safety piece but, is But a lot of, I, I could see now that a lot of the, the facilities that you have in there are fairly small. Correct. Yeah, I, I would, I guess speaking on behalf of the applicant, my concern with respect to the, the comment regarding the 18-wheeler um, is it's very subjective, in my opinion, um, in the sense that we can go back and forth with um, the town engineer and, and ultimately there's, there's no, to, to, as far as I can project, I can't see, if he disagrees, I can't, I can't really come up with a solution that he would be satisfactorily addressed if he just has a strong opinion about this. Mm -hmm. uh, as I indicated last time, uh, and as Miss, I'm not going to say your last name right. I apologize. Um, okay. As she indicated, the there are smaller units. There are self storage facilities that are designed and intended for storing your entire house in in the you know in the situation that you're moving across country or that you're you know clearing out in a state things of that nature. Um, that's not really the model here. You'd, if you were bringing an 18 wheeler to the site, you'd be renting out you know upwards of I think six units. Um, it's just not the model. I don't know how to articulate that better to the town engineer or to the board. It's, it's we've consulted end users, we've consulted with the the applicant himself. Um, with respect to the fire truck, uh, I, I completely understand it's a life safety matter. Um, we cannot provide the 360 degree uh, circulation around the building with the access drive to the south. Um, uh, that goes back to the topography of the property. Even if you were to shrink down the building, that driveway would have such a ridiculous slope on it that it wouldn't work. We're exposing this level. It's 15 feet lower than the upper level, so you couldn't get a driveway around there that was, you know, uh, say, that you could safely travel. Um, we're, we're comfortable with providing the, ha the hammerheads so that an emergency vehicle can back out using those loading areas. Um, I'm happy to work with the fire marshal to address those concerns. But um, like I said, I'm a little concerned about leaving the 18-wheeler comment open-ended. For, for what it's worth, the extra space site up on the north end here um, has a one driveway. I don't know if you could do a Drive turn. Entry. Yeah, so, uh, and I don't, I haven't heard any comments about you know that happening a lot so um, so I don't know if that helps or not but um, I, I just don't want to speak for the fire department um, so I that's don't think there'll be a difficulty here and if they'll require that driveway on the I think you know the applicant has indicated what the nature you know of the clientele is and the type of vehicles that you would ultimately see here. I mean, you know, obviously he can't say, and I can't say that there's never going to be somebody that tries to deliver something, you know, uh, oversized, and they'll have to deal with that. But it sounds like the frequency of that is going to be so small. Um, and if there's a fire, the fire department will service the building as they, you know, they may not even want to pull into the parking lot and be that close to the building. They may. I mean, I, I don't know that they can service it from Arrow because of the slope of the road, but nevertheless, they will do what they need to do. Yeah, there is a uh, standpipe um, now uh, included in the site plan for them, you know, to connect to. Too. So they may they may decide to service the building in case of an emergency a, a different way than pulling into the parking lot. But um, I think, you know, we should let both of them, um, you know, do a final review and then we'll see how it you know, washes out and if they have to come back uh, and talk to you guys about that with the additional input from both of those guys, and then that would be the scenario if, if you want to take care of it tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess just my two cents is that, that I, I'm a lot more concerned about making sure that the fire marshal is happy that, you know, he can appropriately provide <laughs> fire services to the building than, you know, the, the likelihood slash chance that somebody's going to try to drop off a couple of chairs from an 18-wheeler. I mean, we don't design Dunkin' Donuts drive throughs for 18-wheelers, and most people probably like coffee as much as anybody. So, um, you know, I, I, I'm really a lot more concerned about making sure that the fire marshal is comfortable, um, you know, and I guess not to be too harsh. I mean, the 
the fact that the topography and the layout and so forth makes it so you can't do a driveway, you know, shouldn't be the town's problem. I mean, you want to do something on a yes, site sir. that's, you know, exceptionally difficult. Uh, and I just want to make sure that the people who need to protect lives and property feel comfortable that they're going to be able to do so. Excuse me, <coughs> Mr. Okay. Chairman. Uh, the issue that we're, we're addressing um, does seem to be uh, an, you know, an interpretive and, and issue of concern relating to uh, life safety and traffic safety. Would that be uh, an appropriate summation of, of the nature of the concern and, and the potential nature of the fire marshal's concern? So that individual, the fire marshal, hasn't given the final blessing on what has been proposed. There is a, an improvement that has been proposed so that they can turn around, I guess, in the upper lot. But um, And I would presume any concerns that the fire marshal would have are going to be based upon regulatory standards, not just, just his independent opinion. Uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure it's a combination of both. Um, well, it's his... his you know his professional uh, training and experience mm -hmm. you know in applying applicable regulations that, yep. that uh, he would be using as a basis for his judgment um, so would it be appropriate to ha attach a condition uh, a specific condition that the uh, uh, that the plans for the facility comply with all applicable uh, life safety and traffic safety uh, regulatory standards and that if an additional waiver or waivers are required that uh, the applicant be required to submit an application for such waiver uh, you know, to this commission. So, so I think what Peter was suggesting um, as the simplest way forward is just to simply make conditions that the town staff which is town engineer and the fire marshal that they be that they give their final blessing that, to their approval, right? So um, if they don't, there's no discussion of waivers. If they don't, we need to see it again. That's really what it's going to boil down to, All right? Because I think that, that's essentially consistent with what I was yeah. uh, But without you know, discussion of waivers. Whether or, or not right. we attach the specific uh, requirement for a waiver in, in a resolution or not, they would have to come back and apply for for a waiver and, and that they should be uh, at this time put on notice uh, you know, to the effect of that requirement. Mm -hmm. Okay. Other topics? George. Yeah, a couple of questions. The first one, uh, you guys resolved the traffic issues. You felt they were really weren't significant considering the volume that in this particular area out on the uh, Berlin Turnpike and making the rampage and all that stuff that this doesn't, doesn't really add that much to the, uh, to the conditions already there and that this well, you, you seem to be everything. Well, you seem to be asking a question that we would normally discuss after the hearing is closed. Well, but, yeah, I'm so what we, what we, what we heard, well, I, be sure. well, I mean, you, you can ask him what, what, I, what I heard last time is that the, the traffic based on the storage unit is just not that significant. Right. Mm -hmm. I That's think the only thing that still concerns me a little bit, but not, you know, I don't, I don't know if you can control it, but, um, is the access in and out of the gas station. Um, you know, if it's not a gas station, it's something else. Um, it's not gonna be great one way or the other. The intersection does belong to the DOT, um, yes. ultimately. Uh, so the DOT will have some comments and thoughts. By the way, have you had any further dialogue with them? <laughs> Uh, we reached out to them as recently as this morning, and they said they're still reviewing, um, okay. which is consistent with what they had indicated. Um, yeah. I, I guess with the respect, and I know it had been indicated at one point it was requested I bring our, our in-house traffic engineer with me this evening, and then I believe it was the, kind of a consensus of the board that traffic was not, I don't want to say a non-issue, but not something that really needed too much additional discussion. Um, so I didn't bring a copy of the traffic report. I did speak, I I did speak briefly um, with my traffic engineer regarding, uh, actually I believe it was Mr. Hammer's comment about, and I'm, I'm gonna do my best to quote you, and if, I apologize if I butcher it, but I know you had said something to the effect of, there's a lot of gas stations on the turnpike and there's not necessarily anybody who's gonna, who's new, who's gonna say I wanna go to this gas station and has new traffic. Um, 
a, a, I think, you know, it was even referenced that, you know, family and friends of the guy working the, the cash register might be the only new trips. The Wait a minute, unless your station discounts gas about 20 or 30 cents a gallon. Again, the arg I guess the argument would be you're just going to go there instead of another station. So you're not new traffic. Um, right. With respect to the trip generation numbers, though, the the ITE only allows a certain pass by credit. So it's I believe it's I believe we applied it in again I don't have the study in front of me I believe it's 25 percent. Uh, it's probably upwards of that. They're, we're saying of all the traffic going to this site, only 25 percent of it is existing traffic on the rail and turnpike. It's probably it was, as I said, it was Mr. Hammer who made the comment originally. Um, it's we're, we're gonna we're gonna correct you because it was funny the first time. This is Mr. Roberts. But, but you're absolutely right. Uh, why is the name? Was I sitting in his seat last night? Well, you were. You were sitting in his seat. <laughs> yeah, I yes. sat in the first empty seat. Oh, I apologize. Oh. All right. Oh, Maybe Mr. Roberts. you're starting to look more and more like him. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it was. You were sitting in his seat last time. I thought it's this, okay. it was I worth thought a chuckle, right? were messed up this time. I apologize. Now I don't know who, now I don't know who anybody is. thinking exactly like I am. Um, I, I, but the comment was made in, in you know truly in this situation with all the gas stations on the turnpike it's probably upwards of it's more than 50 percent of the trip generation is existing on the turnpike traffic um, just to clarify that point and so um, the report shows that it has a negative impact or has no negative impact on the road roadway network um, those numbers are by far more conservative than they what they would be right so so it comes to be turning and I, uh, in, Mr. turning Mr. in and turning out is what bothers you know most and then of I, us, right? I apologize uh, Mr. Well, Roberts. It's, it's okay Nate <laughs> that's all right. I just took the first yeah, chair that, guys. first that's, chair that's that was good. available that's, that's all yeah, yeah. how can you look anyway uh, my other question um, and I asked the last of a big developer in here a few weeks ago and I didn't get an answer then uh, and you don't really probably know uh, what, what do you think the value of this development will be when you're completing it that I will say I have no idea. You probably don't have any idea. Uh, as an engineer, I try not to think about money. Okay. So, okay, I think that's and uh, okay. L, start. Start when, if it were approved tonight, uh, when would you start, and when do you think you'd be completed? The intent, and as indicated, I believe on sheets. CE501, the soil erosion sediment control plan, would be to start construction as, as soon as we can have all permits obtained. Uh, we, the wild cards being, excuse me, the wild card being DOT, uh, our hope would be to have all approvals for fall of this year, and it's approximately, approximately an 18 month construction schedule with, with the earthwork that needs to go. 18 construction. Correct. Thank you. You're welcome. So, so generally speaking, Peter, um, other comments out of your office, like the dumpster locations and this, that, and the other thing, screening? So the three waivers, uh, as we mentioned, um, final gas station uh, approval, um, design, at least design review, in case you, you wanted to see it as well, uh, final uh, treatment of the wall on the self-storage uh, design review, uh, should look at that one more time. Um, the only thing we didn't talk about, uh, there are uh, a series of rooftop mechanicals. There is a, an, there was some additional screening put on the roof, so I would just, as part of that uh, condition, that those final details be subject to staff uh, review. Um, the revised plans, as we mentioned, subject to both the fire marshal and the town engineer's final, um, final comments. So I think those are the outstanding matters that would um, address the comments that I think everybody's made to this point. Which? Mr. Roberts. <laughs> How high is the retaining wall? Um, know, it's about right. 22, I'm 24 saying, I, feet. I believe at one point it's as high as 25 feet, but yeah. it averages okay. between 20 and 25. And you only propose three trees between that and the building behind it correct what's your what's your thinking there you want to have everybody see this large white building or is that all that can be put there I mean we focused on providing you know putting as many of the trees as possible along the perimeter along Arrow Road and along the frontage um, other, than, other than the one waiver with respect to the landscape island we are compliant with the regulations regarding the trees yeah I guess where I'm, where I'm going is you know Particularly once we saw these renderings, you know, my 
my sort of gut reaction of, you know, there's a really large building behind a really large wall, um, kind of drove me to bad choice of words. Uh, I purposely started driving on that stretch of the Berlin Turnpike a lot more just to kind of see what the surrounding developments look like, you know, other than the Cedar Mountain junkyard, which we'll talk about another day. Um, you know, but things like the motels with the self-storage behind them and, you know, kind of my, my takeaway was that the elevation change is greater here, but all of those properties, either by design or by accident, had a lot more trees between the various terrace levels of development than what you're proposing here. And you know, it, it struck me that you could put some more in there to make it look a little less, oh my God, what's that thing? But still have it visible from the Berlin Turnpike, particularly, you know, up the Arrow Road entrance. Uh, I, I mean, it's at the. I mean, I have, I have no objections if the board feels that you know. That I, I guess symmetrically, you know, two additional trees were provided. And all, you know, in that area, I, I don't see any objections from the applicant. How, how much room is there between the retaining wall? and the curb line of the upper parking lot, you know, where you're trying to squeeze those I, three. I do. Um, I, mean? I gotta grab a set of plans to tell you the exact answer. Yeah. I mean, obviously there's limits as to how big a tree you can put in there. Absolutely. It's like only 10 feet. No, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, that, that's kind of a self-created situation. Absolutely. I mean, and I'm not talking about sticking four <coughs> six foot high arborvitaes in there, because that won't do anything for no. anybody with nope. a 35 or 40 foot building behind it. Right, so what was going through my mind as you say that is if, if the applicant were to say, yeah, I could put a, you know, a, a tree that grows pretty darn big there, but you'd lose two parking spaces, is that something that we would buy off on? It's already no, there's a there's a planting island of, you know, some significance there. They're, right now they're proposing three uh, red maples, uh, mature height, uh, they're indicating is 40 to 60 feet, um, and they're spaced. I mean, you could probably add two more without a lot of challenge to, to that. What, what is the distance between the, the retaining wall and the back of the curve though? It's, uh, I'm, what's the depth of the storage units, those freestanding ones? I don't uh, you, I, you guys have the plans. They're either 15 by 10, I'm not sure. I, was say, I, I think it's about 15 feet. I think that landscape down between the wall and the curb line is about 15 feet, and I'm just yeah, I'm eyeballing that off the an 18 foot stall. It looks to be about it's a little less than a yep. stall length, which is 18 feet. So, um, and we are, you know, as Mr. Gillespie indicated, we are proposing a, a tree directly behind those units. Um, uh, again, if it's you know, a, a strong opinion of the board that additional trees need to be put in there, we can fit two more in there, and you ultimately have five five trees in that area. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that would, I think that would help, yep. and I don't think it would hurt your visibility issue at all. My my thought though with the, uh, I I thought, had a similar thought that gee maybe we needed more trees back there if possible, but the other thing is that those seem to be deciduous trees, so they're going to lose leaves, you know, in the fall, so in the winter it won't look the same. As it, as it does in the early spring. So I was wondering why you would want to use a deciduous tree rather than an evergreen. Is there any reason for that? The height, okay. to be honest with you. The height and the canopy. So I thought at least if you had a, if you had an yeah. appropriate evergreen you know, tree, then, then you'd at least have a green. It would, it would look the same throughout the season. Yeah, I'm not a landscape designer. When it comes to pretty, pretty, I think of red maples. I don't think of don't evergreens. Think that a <laughs> <laughs> I made some notes about that. Yeah, additional trees. Yeah, and maybe we can have somebody weigh in on what types. Sure. Okay. Any other site can, um, things that are 
hanging out there for, for staff that you would bring to our attention? I mean, it, it, there were some from the town engineer, but once again, if you attach the condition that he review it one more time, um, make sure the technical response to his comments is addressed. I think that all my stuff, I think all the zoning officers' comments, so if you attach the two conditions for the fire marshal and the town engineer, that would give them the final opportunity to make sure they uh, are satisfied. So I'm just remembering now, this is a public hearing. So is there somebody from the public that would like to th talk again, if, you, if you'll just offer the podium there, Nate? Would you? Sure. Yes, come on up. Hello again. Hi, <laughs> I'll talk to you this time. My name is Mary Rom. I'm from Ten Tanner Crossing. Um, last time I mentioned this, and it's still a concern of mine. I'm in favor of this project. I think we could have worse neighbors. It's a great use of the land. Um, traffic, traffic. I don't think anybody here thinks that this is going to result in a net increase in traffic. Nobody's of the mindset that if you build it, they will come and suddenly people are going to drive from all over to a new gas station. It's not going to happen. But we already have. <laughs> We already have a substantial amount of traffic that's trying to get its way out of the Cumberland Farms parking lot on Arrow Road because that's the easiest access to the Berlin Turnpike going in either direction. And especially if you want to head south, the driveway that would lead out on the Berlin Turnpike is an exit lane to 175. They've fixed that intersection down Russell Road now so that the traffic just moves right through there, which is great, the traffic's moving, but it's still gonna be hard to get out there and that doesn't stop the other traffic from being backed up at the lights. It's a it very heavily used road, as you all well know, at rush hour. So uh, that is a continuing concern. If they've got people coming out of the new gas stations parking lot trying to get on Arrow Road, you've got the people coming out of the Cumberland Farms lot all sitting there and the people coming down Arrow Road just trying to get out, those of us who live up there anyway, who want to get through the intersection, it's hairy enough some days already. So that's, that's the only comment I have. Thank you for doing the great job that you've done asking all the right questions here. I really appreciate it. So, so, uh, just throw it in for what it's worth. When I drove through here on Saturday morning, the only people on the side by Cumberland Farms were two cars exchanging their insurance information after they <laughs> slammed into each other. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so a there's a little, you know, just kind of, I'm going to respond to her for you, honestly. Um, I'm interested in what DOT has to say, and maybe Peter can provide some um, information as to what would happen if DOT decided they didn't like the driveway layouts themselves. All right, so, so DOT is full of traffic engineers, right, and can more appropriately respond to these things than most of the, the chair, uh, most of the panel. If DOT came in and said they wanted to move the driveway in the middle of the site, which they're not going to, okay, but if they changed the thing significantly, what is the step by which the applicant needs to or w would come back to us or the public? Is there one? We give approval to this site as it is, and it's got two driveway access. If they give them two driveway access and it's completely different, do they come back to us at all? By completely different, um, I mean, there isn't probably a lot of flexibility in this design to have that scenario happen, and it hasn't happened since, you know, I've been here. So, you know, however, if it was a, you know, change of any significance, we would uh, bring it back for your review. Um, <clears throat> but in that scenario, it then be basically here's what DOT will approve, so it kind of forces, you know, you to, uh, you know, almost a similar... You know, unless it's, once again, I mean, I assume they're obviously going to be recommending what a improved safety, um, you know, concept w would How result in. So, the safest going to be worded, uh, approvable, approved. Well, well, they typically wouldn't say anything specific to DOT. DOT won't act until Review. we've approved the concept, and so they're approving what, in theory, the town has accepted as a concept and they're going to change it if they really think it needs to from a safety perspective. Um, um, and to Peter's point, if they really thought it wasn't good the way it was and, and changed it a lot, Peter would be inclined to be bringing it back, but chances are it's not gonna change a lot. Right. Okay, but that's kind of the way the process works. Yeah, I think we had one that had to come back 
quite a number of years ago for a modification of the site plan because you know DOT changed moved one of the entrances to match up with a future traffic light or something like that yep that that in and out ramp at the north end of the uh, shopping center probably Cause yeah because I think that's the one yeah I think we were like they in the middle it. We but were they did uh, it, but it did come back to you for yeah, years it was like in the middle school gym and Bob Jurison was there right so I remember that yeah Bob and I tried to tell State Traffic Commission what they should do, and they, they didn't pay any attention to us. <laughs> any, any additional comments you'd like to bring up? The only suggestion I would have, and I don't know how much sway you have with the DOT, would be if they, the timing on that light is better than it was before, but if that's something that could be set so that it's aware of the traffic coming out and, and allows more time when there's more cars backed up trying to get out, <clears throat> so it's a, an astute point or observation. Do you know that they, do you know that it is not already actuated that way? I have no idea. All I know okay. is that other we'll, we'll oh, set. <laughs> Did you call it? <laughs> the last time I was here, I mentioned that <laughs> you're laughing at me. No. <laughs> The last time I was here, I mentioned that until I think a week before the last meeting, the the red light there, the green light there was five seconds long. I've been counting that same five seconds for years. You know, it's like two cars and, and the second one is going through on a red. I noticed in in a week before the we all came here the last time that um, the light is longer. I'm not certain exactly how long it is, but, but there is a set amount of time. It seems it doesn't seem to be traffic driven, driven. so much. It seems to be... A time, but I haven't had enough instances at that intersection to actually count it yet. So I could go park there and do that for you. <laughs> yeah, actually, you can you can visually see it. If there's square markings in it, what what they've done is they've cut out a square, and there's usually several of them, at least two, oftentimes three. There's a square that's cut into the pavement, and then it looks like somebody put black you know, caulking in the top of it. but that's Where would that be, under the light or right, in the intersection? Right, 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 right in your lane. Right. As you come, you I don't think I've ever seen that. So that's, that would be an indication that it's based on a car being there. It's called actuated, and there's an electricity I thought running. there was like a little detector or something up by the so, lights. No, there's a detector in the road. That's electric yeah. loop. It's in the pavement. Uh, it's in the pavement. Aren't you engineers clever? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Someday it's going to be a camera. That, and, you know, a lot of them are cameras. But, I, but I know anyway. in the past it didn't seem to be driven at all. It was always the exact same amount of time, so clearly yeah. there was a way to set it. Yep. You know, yep. um, I, I do remember you had that concern last time we met. Well, and I'm, seriously, and I'm glad you came to the meeting because I did want to know if that are you talking about the lights both northbound and southbound on the Berlin Turnpike and on Arrow Road? The northbound and southbound lights seem to just be a couple minutes worth of time, and and then because there's if only if there's traffic trying to come out either from the parking lot of Atlas Tile or uh, Arrow Road. Otherwise, it won't turn green. I mean, red, green for us, red for them. The, well, sometimes, the those, sometimes the northbound and southbound arrows will change based on people at Pat Pawtucket Street too, because right, that's be exactly what I meant. You can watch it, and you know you're going to get the green because they've got the reds. Right. Yep. Can exactly. I ask our chairman a question? Uh, I've often wondered this, and it has to do with this. Do the state traffic light engineers come out and evaluate that intersection once this project is built or any major project? Yes. They do. <clears throat> yep, Thank absolutely will. Glad to hear that. Yep. I feel the, better already, thanks. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's part of the permit process, yeah, when they're done. They are on loop detectors? Yeah. What do you want, Google Earth? I just said to him, pull up Google Earth. I'm sure you can see the silly loops there from, from the air. Okay, so it's actually, it's actuated. It, what he's what he's saying is there are loops in the road, which means it must be detecting unless they're not. But we've we've I've had we've had we've a had similar a, problem like or concern like that on other towns. So a they, lot of times I would go to our traffic people, uh, who I know who I actually looked up who it was, and and sometimes they go back and do their thing, whatever yeah. that is, yep. and then they double check it. You know, right. Joe and they can't break that. too, right? So, so. Mm -hmm. that's, that's why they're going to cameras because they break too often, quite frankly. All right, if there's no, oh, sure, well, come on up. I'm 
Lynn Burdick, uh, 58 Tinsmith Crossing. I just have a question. Would, would the timing of the light had changed because of this project, that they had just put in this little mechanism in the road? I, I wouldn't expect so, but do you know something? Oh, just, uh, I was I, simply going to say, if, if I may, I guess, address okay. her question for the board. Um, if the traffic impact study showed a, a, a deterioration in the operation of the intersection, um, we would have looked at signal timing and things of that nature to at least bring it back to its current condition so that the impacts of our development would be, would be nil. Right. And so what he's talking about is that during, when he goes to DOT, and if DOT says you need to do some stuff, you know, his, his work, his traffic engineer would have done some, ma some math that shows how the timing should work better. And DOT would agree or not agree, whatever, work it out. And either a DOT person would go out there and change it when it's done or, or have them do it, probably the DOT person. Just, you know, that's that metal box on the side of the road. It's a computer in there. Okay. Thanks. Anything else? All righty. So come on back. The mic's yours. Last questions? Any, anything else? If nobody's got any questions, we've... Heard from the applicant, unless you got some final thoughts? We've heard no, from the applicant. Uh, no, again, the only thing I, I, I would like to indicate that I just have some reservation about is the 18-wheeler the piece. Um, I'm perfectly content working with the fire marshal with respect to ensuring the life safety matters with respect to the trucks and truck access. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also, you know, as Mr. Gillespie indicated, uh, I don't know that I indicated the building is sprinklered. We are, in addition to having a sprinkler building, providing the fire department connection on the street. Um, and it being a self-storage facility, the occupancy is probably about as low as a facility could be. Um, so I'm relatively confident we can find an amenable solution with the fire marshal. Um, the 18-wheeler issue is really, in, in my opinion, a little bit subjective, and I do have concerns about really reaching an impasse on that particular, on that one particular item of, of the engineer's comments. Uh, he did have some stormwater comments and questions that we went back and forth on a few times, and um, ultimately, we will provide any calculations he needs on the stormwater and, and things of that nature. Uh, I think they're satisfactorily addressed, but we'll work through them. Uh, the 18-wheeler piece, like I said, it's just a, a very subjective point um, that I, I just wanted to reiterate to the commission. Fair Thank enough. you. Thanks, Nate. And uh, I also wanted to say one more time, I apologize, Mr. Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I should have looked at the nameplate before I sat down. Um, so. Uh, unless there's some additional questions for the applicant. Close the Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Yeah. Thanks, George. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. <clears throat> Discussions. Thank you. Discussions. A motion. I don't think George is going to help us here. Would you like to take a shot at it? I guess just to get things going. Uh, make a motion to approve application 1941-17-Z, uh, seeking a special permit in accordance with section 52 for self-storage, outdoor storage, and gas station convenience store, um, subject to conditions to be determined in our conversation here. Okay. <clears throat> Do you want to go through it? Are they in some... Sure. Order for you, that makes sense. So the first um, part of the motion would be to grant the uh, waivers uh, as requested, f uh, uh, there being three of those, uh, number one being parking partial parking space in the front yard on Arrow Road, number two, uh, that the uh, required parking space number for the storage facility be reduced from 37 required to 32. And then third, that the landscaping waiver for section G3 pertaining to the width of uh, landscaped island and the gas station uh, also be granted. Um, okay. Number, well, the, maybe the first condition, those are part of the motion. First condition, uh, that the final gas station uh, building and canopy designs be submitted to uh, design review for their approval. Yep. Uh, number two, that the final rooftop mechanical uh, locations uh, and proposed screening be subject to staff review. Okay. Number three, um, that the revised plans uh, are subject to review and approval of the fire marshal based on his June 29th comments. Uh, number four, and this is one that might 
need some tweaking. The revised plans are also subject to the June 15th comment from the town engineer. Uh, number five, that the uh, final detailed design for facade improvements to the Russ uh, Arrow Road elevation be submitted uh, to design review for their uh, review and comment. Uh, number, we up to six now? Yep. That uh, the landscaping plan uh, be revised um, to address, well, so whether you want to do evergreens or whether you want to do additional uh, deciduous uh, maple trees uh, behind the uh, freestanding 11 by 15 storage units uh, as it faces the Berlin Turnpike. How, how, about, a, how about additional trees facing the Berlin turn, Turnpike as, you know, coordinated with town staff? Okay. Right. Yeah. Yep. Right. I think that... Um, I think that uh, doesn't. Did I have the town engineer? Retaining wall? Yeah. So we'll go back to the, the town engineer. How about the retaining wall? Did the retaining wall need to go back to design review as well? I, they provided a, uh, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, the, it's obviously one big project, so it's going to yeah. have to go back. I, didn't, I don't think they had a particular uh, concern about the actual treatment of the, it was a pretty standard uh, retaining wow. wall block, you know, treatment. So, um, but I mean, they may have other okay. observations as they review. Uh, the gas station, because um, I would, that pretty much goes with the gas station design. Okay. So, uh, I don't, so I don't know if you want to provide guidance to the town engineer that you're not concerned too much about the tractor trailer comment, um, just to provide him with some guidance. Obviously, he wasn't here, and he did not hear uh, the testimony from uh, the uh, operator in terms of the market that they envision you know using the storage facility so that information um i don't think at any point in the review was factored into his comments um so you may need to if you feel comfortable provide him with that guidance that based on the testimony you don't feel there's going to be a high uh incidence or likelihood of tractor trailers coming into the site so i, I guess i would suggest that the the uh, committee i don't know if the committee should um weigh in and, and tell him what he needs to do uh, maybe this committee member i.e me um felt pretty comfortable with it uh and the record you know he can read the record or you can pass it on to him that i felt pretty comfortable with the applicant's presentation of the facts uh, and tend to believe it's probably true yeah. right yeah i mean and, and i guess my thought is that you know that the applicant has made you know, provided reasonable evidence that they don't anticipate 18 wheelers coming into the facility as a routine thing. You know, and, and I guess to follow up on Tom's original point, I don't know any regulatory standard that would require every driveway and parking lot be designed in such a way that 18 wheelers can routinely come in and out of them. So, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not concerned. I'm not as concerned that that's going to be, you know, a, a fatal issue in the engineer's comments, you know, that would mean we can't approve it because, you know, it, it doesn't allow 18 wheelers to, you know, to come in and turn around in the building. Um, you know, 18 wheelers go a lot of places and create traffic hazards and, Do they ever? Um, you know, I, I think the, the applicant as the owner and operator of the building is going to be the one that will want to prevent that from happening as much as anybody on town staff. Sure. Mr. Chair, I didn't hear a second to the motion. There so I, I would, I would uh, provide that second if necessary, uh, yeah. uh, along with my, uh, um, my seconding or approval of inclusion of the, uh, the various waivers and conditions as enunciated by the uh, town planner. Thank you. Were there any other uh, conditions people remember thinking of that Peter might have missed? I, I can't think of any other. He hit the couple that I wrote down. Everybody okay with that? All right, we have a motion, we have a second. If there's no additional discussion, no. all those in favor say aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed? Okay, seven nothing. You got it? Go get started. Go get, go get DOT to do something.
See you later, guys. <coughs> All right, we're going to move on to uh, item 3.2, which is, a, again, a public hearing. This is application 1953-17-Z, CCC Construction, uh, Mr. Frank DeBacco seeking a special permit for a garage over the maximum 850 square feet at 11 Vinny Drive. Welcome. Good evening, Frank DeMarco from CCC Construction. With me, I brought the uh, new property owners and future taxpaying residents, Mr. Bolano and Stephanie, um, Michael and Stephanie Bolano. Um, I'll have Michael do his little second, uh, his uh, comments first, and then I'll address a few others with some different technical items. Okay. Good evening. Uh, thank you for allowing us to speak. I'm Michael Volano. Stephanie Volano. The main reason we are asking this for this uh, permit is to keep the neighborhood looking nice. Uh, both Stephanie and I each own a big car. We'd like to keep it inside the garage and out of sight. We are planning to keep a very nice yard, and we have a number of machines to that effect. We have a rototiller. We have a dethatcher. We'd like to keep those in the garage. Um, We'd like to be able to keep the trash can and recycle bin inside, uh, out of sight. Um, we also designed our house thinking that one, at least one of our mothers might live with us someday. So you'll notice on our plans we have a, a full bathroom on the first floor and the thing marked as the office can convert to a bedroom. And we're thinking we might one day need a wheelchair ramp. And if, if so, we'd like to keep that in the garage and again, out of sight. Thank you. So right, thank you. With that, I'll walk you through the, the overall construction of the garage and how we got to the dimensions that we did. Um, if you notice that the outside dimensions of the garage are 26 feet, your typical foundation if, if it is between 10 and 12 inches. So we'll, for argumentative sake, I'll just call it a foot and then notice that the town gets four inches at the end of the conversation. Um, so when you take the 26 feet and you minus the foot, you're down to a 24 foot car garage uh, on the interior uh, for these two bays here. Um, the vehicles that Michael and Stephanie were referring to range between 18 and 21 feet long, um, and they're basically 7 foot 11 wide from mirror to mirror. Um, so the garage doors, you notice, are 9 feet each, and there's 2 feet of space in between each door so that when they open their car door and it swings out almost 4 feet, they're not hitting the other vehicle. Um, it's one of the reasons why we have it a little wider um, to accommodate those spaces in between here. Um, and then we also have the car depth of uh, 24 feet uh, from inside to inside, because when you park the vehicle and it's say, call it 21 feet, you'll have three feet. And then you'll lose that very quickly, because when you pull in, you'll lose the last eight to 10 inches and you're down to one foot in the front. So this first bay would take the longest car. Uh, another shorter car can go here and allowing the, the person to walk in front of the vehicle and then either go down their staircase to their basement or come across and then if they needed to add the ramp, it would take another four feet away from here, leaving this garage only 17 feet long for a vehicle. Um, so the reasons why we mathematically put that out that way, proportion-wise, is to accommodate the two larger, the largest vehicle here, a uh, sub-large car here, and a smaller vehicle here, um, so they can easily get access to the house and access to the basement. They do not have a hatchway, nor do they want one. They want the security of having the ability to get into their basement through the home. So it's not another means of, of a break-in or a vandalism or it's a security piece. That, that they, If you can have access from the garage to the basement, it's better than having a little tin roof on a, on a, on a bilco door um, with another door in the basement. So I think it's a better creation overall for weather, security, and it's just a better feature overall. Um, so that's the reason why we chose to put that staircase in here. Um, and we've added those features to it. So we're asking for the variance um, because the code regulations say that it's supposed to be a maximum of 850 square feet. Uh, the current space that we have is 912 square feet. So we're going to be 62 square feet over in the overall design of the garage um, according to the, the regulations. Um, I never knew this zoning regulation existed before. Um, I've built many homes in this town. My house was built in 1997, and I'm sorry to say it, it's larger than this, and nobody ever told me that back then. Um, I've built 12 houses since then, and they're all larger than this. <laughs> so I don't know how we got by it, and I don't know how it, it ended up that way, but I'm also wondering at some point in time, 
uh, with the, the, the vehicles, with the, they keep changing in design. Some days they're small, some days they're large. Um, I don't know when this law went into effect, but uh, apparently back then, uh, when Ford made their cars, they were five feet wide, passenger of two, and no more than eight feet long. Perfect. Uh, that garage side would be accommodating. But today, vehicles are expeditions, explorers. They're 22 feet, 23 feet. You put a hitch on the back, they're 24 feet long, 25 feet long. Dualies, they come out eight feet wide. You can't even fit in the garage door. So it's almost to the point, to a certain degree, no disrespect, that the regulations that are a little outdated with the current vehicles that are being made uh, to some degree. Um, they are larger than they used to be. Um, and as you look, the trends sort of go back to the smaller ones, which we are starting to do, but then we go back to the larger ones. So there's always that mentality in America, go big, go small, or go, go home. So okay. everybody goes big. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a garage to accommodate today's vehicles um, uh, on the extreme side, I guess, if you want to call it, versus the smaller uh, convertible. So this um, is not for commercial purposes? It's not for commercial purposes. I sure I don't, the, last I checked, I didn't see them, you know, driving dump trucks and, okay. and things of that nature. Uh, uh, are all your other houses going to have these large, larger garages? Uh, we are negotiating one other that may have the same situation as this. Uh, they have, uh, I think one drives an Expedition, um, and they do want a three-car garage versus the shed out in the back. Uh, but the other home that we have sold is only a two-car garage. So when we are down with strictly the two-car garages, we don't have issues. It's when we add the third car and we make it the real size of what it's supposed to be to function is when we Plus run into those issues. With all the, and the tra two well, trash when, we keep exactly. Adding. And when you add that at all in, yeah. he's, he's so tight that it may not all fit in there. Um, be, with the barrels and whatnot, because like I said, if it's 25 feet, the 95 gallon barrel is two foot six, almost three feet. You put that in front of the car, you're down to a 20 foot parking spot. Then lose six inches for the garage to close because you never want to get the back of the door hit by your car. So you're, you're, you're down to a 20 foot section. And then when you want to walk by it, it is kind of tight. So is this stick built garage? Not this is going to be a custom built garage like the rest of the home is, yeah. I gave copies of uh, a site plan, the elevations, the floor plans, everything is there to see. And the den that he was referring to with the bathroom is here to here um, for the convenience. And then the potential ramp would be right here parallel with the staircase. Just to keep you informed, I, I think we've been looking at these Elijah garages, Rich, for what, five to ten now here? I don't and even we know. may not have been before that. I'm not observing it, perhaps staff or whatever. Right. Uh, but there have been a number of them in, and not necessarily in a new area like you have, the mm -hmm. old new area. Uh, but I, I haven't seen any coming in either in the, you know, the smaller homes in the older parts of town or anything, but a number of them do come in. And uh, they're a little, they need a, either a little higher or slightly wider. Yep. Rich. Yeah, I guess just looking at the site plan or the plot plan just want to confirm that you know basically from the end of the cul-de-sac it will be behind the house and will be facing wooded open space rather than facing the street or the neighbor's house or anything like that it is currently facing the reservoir uh, there's a possibility that they may flip the home um, to, because of the MDC issues and some of the town issues with the driveway and the separator tank that has come up recently. Uh, so then the house may have to flip to avoid some uh, special requirements required for the MDC and the right of way because we're paving over the top of it and they are giving us some issues. Flip the house facing the back of the lot? It would just be just from this way to this way. It would be a mirror image of itself. And it's, oh, okay. it, and it's based on mostly because of that sanitary easement that we're paving over. And then Derek had some concerns that we were paving over the, uh, the little box with the two uh, circles. Or there's a sediment structure. And they are concerned that if the truck drives over that, they're going to ruin the driveway and they don't want to be held liable. So they're well, asking for relief. When you go to that building down there? We are eagerly waiting. I walked down in there today, the and if I get ticks, I'm going to be suing you. Well, you? The road is pen paved. You can no, just walk down the road. you have done a good job of making it walkable from that point of view. There's yep. no 
very little grass. Well, you're going to get ticks. So. Yeah, we're resolving a few issues but with I, Eric I, and Peter. I'm interested and in seeing how much you've done. We have two ready to go, and we're just trying to get through the last couple of hurdles. Anybody from the public here wishing to speak? No. Assuming not. Quick question. Is the attic a finished heated area? Right now it's designed to be as open space, just storage, unheated. Um, it will have a plywood floor on it and a staircase going upstairs. All the windows, that's why I was. Yeah, no, it's, it's, the, it's, it's an open attic storage. Okay. Uh, uh, along the same lines, with regards to that attic, um, uh, are you going to uh, install the infrastructure to be able to, f you know, finish that attic, such as uh, having, uh, uh, you know, water drainage piping and so forth? At the uh, moment, the plan is yeah. just to put down plywood and leave it as storage. Okay. Other questions? And the term office just simply is, it's not a commercial office, it's a... No. It's a home office. So they don't get taxed on another bedroom? They do work a lot from home, so they, they want a desk in their, in their facilities. <coughs> Make a motion to close the hearing. Thank you. Second. Thank you, George. All those in favor say aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed? Okay. Motion on the issue. Make a motion we approve application 1953-17-Z as submitted. Second. Thank you. Do we have any issues, Peter? No. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. Good luck. Thank Welcome you. to town. Thank you. When did you say you're starting to build the first house? I have uh, two items to resolve with uh, Derek. One is a sidewalk issue and a right of way. Um, and once those are resolved, we have at least made my permits. What are all those big pipes you took out of the ground down there? There we used to be the old storm drainage system that was there that we had to relocate. So as we stored, as we relocated it, we pulled them out of the ground. There's a couple more still in there that we have to get to in the next stuff. house. Yeah, you mean the big. stuff that had been put in like 40 years ago? Yes. Probably, yeah. 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 They've been taken back out and redirected and yeah. bypassing systems while we did all that work. Okay. Yeah. Uh, somebody planning something massive. That, <laughs> the pipes that went in are just as big, maybe a little no, larger. It's going to be a fruit street. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. okay. Thank you very much. All right. Take care. Take care. Take care. Is, that, uh, is that a town easement? That's going to be in the corner. Okay. Neat. Just forgot it. Okay. Uh, the hell is my. Oh, there it is. Any other business? Minutes. Minutes. One, two, three, four, five. There are five of us who were here last yeah, time. I have me voting for him. Well, you weren't here either. All right. And I didn't get here until 9 o'clock. I tell you what, <laughs> I will vote for them if somebody can assure me they've read them and they're happy with them. Some of them. They're happy so, with them. We don't need, we don't really need you. So no. Motion to approve? Yep, I, I make a motion to approve the minutes of uh, the meeting that we had on June 20th. Thank you. Um, did you notice any edits that you'd like to offer? I did not. All right. Did, um, is there a reference in there about what time you come in, you came? No, I mean, I, I came at the beginning of, uh, 3.5 on page 13. So where would we normally? Just put an asterisk on the, on the attendance and then just say arrived at item one. Yeah, yeah, because I, because yeah. I wasn't counted in here. Right. And I am counted in here, yeah, so, so that, that shows at me. At the beginning of agenda item such and such. All right, so on, so on page one, Rich Roberts, clerk, right? Um, just put a little asterisk. Put a little asterisk on the front page out here. There is one. There is one. And then. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Arrived for item 3.5. Okay. Arrived later for item 3.5. Just add that. Okay. Put irresponsibly late or something like that. If you wanted to add a little emphasis or something like that. Uh -huh. Irresponsibly late. Irresponsibly late. 
Show All right. That work. I could have gotten a letter. Or snuck. I think maybe it was more descriptive. Was he snuck in? Da- Dave, because Tom, Tom didn't. <laughs> Tom didn't know this one. So. so Dave, would you be kind enough to second the motion? Thank you. <laughs> All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Thank you. All right, that's five people voting. All right. Uh, what else? Letter. Staff reports. Oh, the letter. Is your letter? Staff reports. Uh, the sign committee uh, met again last week. Um, so we're starting to make uh, some progress. Um, another one coming up in later July. Starting to get into some of the specifics. So okay. hopefully by the end of the summer, we'll have a draft of the, of the sign regulations. Bring us up to speed with Lucky Lose and the letter. So you should have a, you have a letter um, dated June 26 from Lobo and Associates LLC. Uh, as as you may recall, they received a zoning uh, letter regarding their lack of uh, completion of a condition relating to landscaping to address some of the noise issues at, at, theoretically, and um, they did not meet the deadlines. So after several uh, mm-hmm. emails, I think uh, they responded with a request to get an additional month. Um, as written in the letter. Um, As I mentioned before, we have uh, continual uh, uh, contact from uh, Maria Sapala. If you recall, she was the neighbor a couple of houses down Marsh Street. Uh, She did send me an email today. Um, She's aware of this letter. Um, I don't know that she has a strong feeling about giving them more time or not, but nevertheless, she um, did complain about noise on two occasions recently, the last one being last Thursday night. And apparently the police officer that showed up was um, not interpreting the noise ordinance. Um, He was indicating that as far as he was concerned, the decibel levels were 62, um, when in fact they were 55 and 45 after a certain time in the evening. So um, she indicated that because of that misinterpretation, he should have gotten two additional noise violation tickets um, because of the error uh, in the readings uh, by the sergeant who's new to this particular situation. So I did uh, reach out to the police chief and obviously gave him my interpretation of the noise ordinance and he agreed and he, as far as I know, passed that on to the sergeant who might end up being the sergeant who goes out there uh, on weekend nights to make sure that for future purposes um, he understands what the levels of compliance are and uh, what, the, what a violation would be considered. So as far as she's concerned, her input is that he's had two more noise violations on top of the previous violations. Can I um, ask a question, Peter? This is not going to accelerate, and I'm exaggerating here in my comment, like the West Hartford situation where the cops have to be stationed at liquor establishment I think it is out there I would going on now for I, I would have I would hope not I would hope I not hope but not but I mean she uh, is vigilant about uh, when she senses that the noise is exceeding uh, she's indicated she's gotten to the point where she can hear when she believes it's going over the decibel levels and you can hear the no, no, a lot of people yeah. think she's a complainer but the, that isn't the point the point is that he is not doing what he's supposed to be doing, and he's kind of ignoring us to some degree. I'm not saying he's like uh, the upper end of Arrow, Arrow Road over there, but him, but uh, nevertheless, uh, considering he's running a town property, I feel that Lou ought to really be trying to do something serious here and get on with it. He's done okay in the past with plantings and things, but except for this part of it, I think. so. When, when did we approve it with the condition that he do the plantings? Was that like two years ago? Two years ago. Was yeah. It, was it two? No, as I indicated to you last meeting, I had sent him, I, I got emails where, you know, I was indicating he, where is the plan? What are you doing about the landscaping in the spring as well as in the fall again? I think we might have approved it towards the end of the previous year. So it may not be two full years, but all, last year was a full. He didn't approve it for a five year condition? We did, but there was a condition that 
he do this landscaping and that assume, we you know we assume that he does that at the very beginning and he okay. did not get around to doing it nor has he gotten around to doing it yet this year so yeah i mean uh, and you know as much as i want to see businesses succeed but i mean when you've known about a condition you agreed to it and two years later you are beginning the initial process of envisioning the plan um you know that to me that's kind of a thumb in the eye and i I don't think it's um, responsible. Yeah, I guess in my mind, um, since I know that the fall season is the best planting season, I, th I think this could happen, And but I'm going to want to see plantings in the ground this fall, right? And the, the right time to plant is August, September, you know? That's so true. Not July. I not, mean, that's... Not, uh, no, right. but if he, right. if he gave it to us in July... He gives it yeah, to be us ready at the end of this month. Be ready for the fall. Be, you know, so right. I guess what I'm going to suggest between what uh, mm -hmm. what Rich just said and maybe my own thoughts, if anybody else agrees, I'm going to want to see, or I'm going to be rather upset, as he gives me a plan later this month that they plant the next month, right? <laughs> don't, don't then tell me that you're waiting for the spring because I know that's not even the best time to do it, right? Long range forecast suggests reasonable weather this summer, considering the dryness we had last year. So. Is that in the letter? So the, the letter <laughs> saying. <laughs> well, you could find a problem here. So, so the letter is requesting an extension instead of June 30th, which passed to June 31st. Is that what the. Ju July 30th, this to month. July 31st, so the end of the month. Yeah, so give us a plan by the end of the month. Yeah. Yeah, so if he gives us a plan by the end of the month. that's reasonable, that'll still work. Because, it would yeah, still work for this makes, for right. this fall, yeah. not, uh, not next spring. If he can plant in August and get away with it, this, and he might this year. Right? Yeah. He could. Oh, yeah. But yeah. It certainly isn't. You and I could. It depends on the plan that he presents, too. I mean, there's a lot of shade uh, out there, and if it's, you know, if I think he might even have an irrigation system. In Probably place, a so. good idea, actually. Yeah, yeah. so. Um, he yeah. won't do that, though, will he? We, we will, we, we await the presentable plan with the vision. I'm envisioning Suggested. the initial of watering. Yeah. So. Preliminary. He isn't going to like you for that. Yet. So I will advise, uh, seems like a consensus, I will advise the zoning officer that, you know, wouldn't be the end of the world if he worked with him to get the plan by the end of July. Sure you have. So the other part of this is the uh, continuing uh, violations of the noise ordinance. You did have a condition that he comply with the noise ordinance. Any thoughts on on that? Uh, as I mentioned to you, uh, in in in, and you haven't you have not done this since I've been here. But in in extreme instances, uh, you have the. Uh, ability to call for what they call a show cause hearing to have uh, the applicant or the permit holder come in and demonstrate why um, his permit potentially shouldn't be revoked because of failure to comply with the terms and conditions of the permit. Um, uh, Mrs. Sapala or Ms. Sapala, um, I believe, is. Um, beginning to push in that direction in terms of his repeated violations of the noise ordinance. So that is the other part of this as to uh, whether um, in terms of advising the zoning officer, because he would ultimately be the authority to call, call the show cause hearing, you want to go down that road or do you want to wait and see how the rest of the next, you know, few weekends um, go. I didn't get any uh, complaints over the long weekend. So I'm, it was last Thursday that there was were a. Open? Were they open? Those past I, I have to assume that they were such a busy weekend and the weather being so nice that yeah. they must have had. I don't, I, although I don't know exactly what his schedule um, was over the past weekend, but nevertheless, um, she did reach out to me today, and Thursday was the only date that that there was a there was an an, an incident. So. Uh, Peter, with respect to the noise ordinance, the the citations that have that are on record, um, what's the procedure and consequences of, uh, of a, you know, a finding that those, viol that, that those are violations? Uh, it's ulti ultimately up to you in terms of what the consequences. Uh, the procedure would be to issue uh, him a, a show cause 
notice uh, with a date and a time of a hearing to be held. It would typically, we would basically do it on one of your planning and zoning commission nights. He would, uh, uh, and, and it would say within the order that, you know, it's to, you know, show cause why your permit should not be revoked or modified. We'd have to work with a town attorney on the language, but theoretically uh, you could um, take away his permit or you can modify his permit. You could attach additional conditions. You could do basically whatever we put in the notice in terms of the That's a public It'll be a public hearing. He would have the opportunity to defend his permit, explain why he believes he's entitled to continue it and he's been complying with it. And then anyone who has, you know, other testimony, uh, facts or evidence would also be provided the opportunity. And I assume Ms. Paula would primarily be that person. Uh, he could have, you know, supporters come and provide testimony as well as to what he's been doing to comply with the permit. So. Um, so to answer your question, yeah, it's a range of things that you could, you know, um, attach to the permit or uh, revoke the permit. So, so other than uh, the procedure of a show cause hearing and the consequences of the show cause hearing, uh, there's no consequence to, uh, you know, the leaseholder as a result of the violations. Are, are you uh, asking only, only this commission? Are you asking? Like, does he get getting, fined? Getting a citation for violating the noise ordinance, I mean, it... it he gets tickets for, and yeah, fines you, for you those. either admit it and, or pay the fine and, and don't contest it to a hearing or contest it to a citation hearing officer to be named by the town manager. Um, That's the I, crux of my, my issue, whether or not there's two independent paths. There's yeah, the there is. I mean, there, there, there has been. There's the citation ordinance, which has either pay or contest and you know I'm, I'm guessing since we haven't heard that it's been contested that he's just you know paid the ticket right um, but the violations themselves have independent consequences tied to one of the conditions right. of our approval right I, I guess my kind of thought at this point is that when the zoning officer goes back to him and says you know please come back to our country and, and start thinking about envisioning a planting plan. Um, and oh, by the way, you know, the commission is aware that you've been issued citations on X number of instances and, and both of these are of some not insignificant concern to the commission in terms of complying with the terms of the permit. And if, you know, if there are more noise violations and there is no planting plan, you know, around July 31st, then I think, you know, kind of in tandem, you know, saying, look it, you know, enough is enough. Um, not only are you ignoring the conditions that you had agreed to, you are violating the other, you know, one of the other conditions. And, you know, as a practical matter, the summer will be two thirds over by the time we get around to having a hearing, but, um, you know, otherwise it'll be, you know, the spring of next year and we'll be, you know, coming around again on exactly the same carousel. Yeah, I, I tend to think, that, you know, that, you know, I agree with, with you know, the, the, the need and, and the desirability of, you know, maintaining the relationship that Lucky Lou's has with, with the town in terms of its you know, business productivity and what it adds to the community. But I do think that uh, Lucky Lou is uh, kind of uh, thumbing his nose at the commission uh, you know, with his, either his insensitivity or disregard of uh, the compliance with the conditions that were placed on the permit. Uh, I tend to agree the emphasis of the commission should probably be on getting that you know, plan uh, submitted as soon as possible and have a date certain established for uh, the plantings and that that be pretty, you know, what's that established be fairly rig rigorously, <laughs> rigorously uh, enforced. Um, so uh, I think the informal thing would be to, you know, as, as uh, you know, as was suggested a moment ago, is to include 
in town discussions with uh, Lucky Lou with regards to uh, the, the you know plantings mm -hmm. resolution that uh, uh, he also be notified of the these other violations and the commission's concern yeah okay. well even after he puts in the, the plantings he still has to maintain the uh, sound under the sound violation so that those trees may never they may give him a buffer but he still has to worry about his bands or his stereo system doing a sound check to the decibel levels required yeah it's more of a management you know keeping keeping uh, in check you know the people that he allows to entertain people so um yeah he I can't doesn't get a free ride you know if he does do the planning oh no 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 the noise no no he has to do the plannings regardless of whether they're the effective or not the plannings being as a screen for the noise i've always been somewhat skeptical that that's going to work anyway me too but it was a condition so what so is the what is the no, the allowable noise level that we allow depends the on the, the day of the week and the t night but okay. it's 55 or it drops down to 45 after 10 o'clock i believe it is okay and he can, okay so and he was measured at 62 decibels so i was just wondering like what that difference of 12 would be yeah, it's a, sort of an exponential. Yeah, if you, loud, yeah, I'm not a sound loud. expert, okay. but yeah. Well, those levels are similar to what we're looking at the high school. It's basically, 55 is rain. Or an 55 is rain. It's like rain or urban noise. So really? it's it's like a air conditioner running in the background. Really? 55, I'm pretty sure, is rain. Hmm. 85 is deafening. All right, so uh, hopefully we'll see them in the next meeting, which brings me to the next topic, which is, do we normally have a meeting in July, second half of July? And do we need one this time? So we have one application. <clears throat> However, um, it's a renewal of a special permit for the uh, cigar uh, club. They are... I mean, they were they are required to come back in and renew the permit if if it's the only agenda item, uh, which at this point I think it is. I would be inclined, you know, not to uh, call a meeting and push it out. What else? What else would be on the agenda potentially is just uh, right, lucky this, lose, that's, right? That's uh, well, probably no. It wouldn't uh, it could be lucky lose once again, depending upon you know what goes on. Uh, no, it wouldn't be because. Um, that would be yeah. the 20 whatever right. so the, the next meeting is in 19 first one in august right so when lucky lou would probably come in that's that's what i was thinking right. right so so is there any reason for us not to comfortably say let's cancel the 19th that's fine with me and then the other thing we would put on the first meeting would be the annual re election re-election yeah let's not make chairman, that an annual chairman, thing chairman for life is that what we're going to change i'll change the agenda <laughs> accordingly I, i've got a i've got a real job now and i'd okay. rather not um but but if you miss the conversation uh if some of us may not be sitting on this panel a month from now so because three of us is that what you think is it three every year yeah three people drop off so so that would also if we didn't meet that would give them time to re <coughs> reappoint you it may, it may be on the next agenda yeah, for nobody's put in their appointments yet oh they haven't Okay. okay. And the, the town council doesn't meet again until the day before our next meeting. The first of first of the. Uh, they didn't 17th, meet. They didn't meet on Monday, so they would meet on the seventeenth. Seventeenth. Yeah. Neither oh. neither party has put in appointments. That's no. right. I'm I'm looking at the nineteenth. All right. Then uh, I would entertain a motion to uh, to uh, cancel, cancel the eighteenth. Eighteenth. I second. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. And then our next meeting would be the would be the first. August. First of August. Okay. It's a Tuesday. It is a Tuesday. Okay. Do we get bumped? I, I always forget how this rule works. No, it's a, no. There's a holiday. If it's a holiday, I think. Okay. So then we actually meet before the town council that, or do we meet at the same time? No, they meet on Mondays. Normally, so they're the week after us. Yeah, the right. first one is the eighth, or yeah, whatever it is. Yeah. Okay. Well, they probably cancel that one too. I think they only go once a month in July or summer. Okay, so we will see you on the first of first of August. Okay.
right. motion to close. Thank you. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 aye.